Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're going to look at how we use Newton's method to solve equations. Sometimes you may encounter equations that you cannot solve by other methods that you've learned, such as algebraic methods, and you'll be required to solve them numerically. There are non-calculus methods of numerical solution, but Newton's method is a method that uses derivatives, and it's better than the other numerical methods in that it will converge to a solution faster and more efficiently. So it is a preferred method for numerical solutions. What I mean by a numerical method is that you, you don't have an algorithm or a technique to, to solve. Instead, you start with an approximation of the solution and then use, you use the technique to get a better approximation. And then you use the method again to get an even better approximation. And you continue until you get the, a solution that has the accuracy that you desire. It's also called an iterative method in that you repeat the process over and over and over again. You may not need to know where the formula came from, but I'm going to give an explanation of how it works, how the formula is derived, and then we'll take a look at how it's used. So if we were to take a look at a function, and if that function crosses the x-axis, the point at which it crosses is called a root. And if we wanted to find the value of that root, Newton's method says that if we start with a close enough approximation, it's not gonna work if we start with an approximation that's far away. This only works when you start with an approximation that's close, and there's various ways that you can obtain that, uh, which I will talk about in the next video. But in this video, we're going to be given the first approximation. So let's say we're given x1, and if we were to find a point on the graph at x1, and if we were to draw a tangent line at that point, that tangent line will cross the x-axis at a point that I'm going to call x2 that's closer to the root than x1 was. Then if we were to repeat the process, so we would go up to our graph at the point x2 and draw another tangent line at that point, it would cross at a it would cross the x-axis at a value closer yet to the root than x1 and x2. And we would continue that until it, we get as close as we need to get. So that's the whole idea of Newton's method, but let's take a look at where the formula came from. You may or may not remember that when you're finding the equation of a straight line, you can use what's called the slope point form of a straight line. And if I had a general value x, y, and a specific value x1, y1, the formula would look like this. Now what I want to do is I want to replace x1 with f of x1. So I'm going to leave the y there, and I'm just going to write this as f of x1. So this equation represents this tangent line, the first tangent line that I drew. I do know the slope of that tangent line because I know that the slope of a tangent line is the derivative. So I am going to replace the slope with f prime of x1. So I have y minus, instead of y1, I have f of x1 equals, instead of slope, I write the derivative at x1, because we know they're the same, times x minus x1. I also know that this point here will be on that same line, and the coordinates of that point are x2, 0. So if I put those values in, y will be 0, and x will be x2. I am now going to take this equation and solve for x2 because what I'm interested in is figuring out this value x2 that's closer to the root. That's the whole goal here. So I'm just going to rearrange this a little bit. 
I'm going to write f of x1 and I'm going to divide by f prime of x1. And that will be x2 minus x1. From there, I can add an x1 to both sides. So x2 will be equal to x1 minus f of x1 divided by the derivative at x1. If you've got lost with all that notation, don't worry about it. You might not need to know where the formula came from. I just thought it was a good idea to illustrate where, it, where Newton got this formula. So this is the formula we can use to find a better approximation of our root than the one we started with. Once we get that next approximation, then we use the process again with my new value of x, and I get x3, which will even be a better approximation, and I continue with that. Let's take a look at how we actually use this. If we were asked to solve this equation, there is an algebraic method that I could use to solve it, and if you understand how to solve it algebraically, you can go ahead and try that as a check. But what I want to do is use this as an example of using Newton's method to solve it. There are actually three real roots to this equation, so there are three values of x that make this equation equal to zero. If I were to draw the function f of x equals 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 8x, it would look something like this, and you can see that it crosses the x-axis in three points. One of the points is an exact value zero, the other point is close to negative one, and the other value the other root is close to positive 2. So I'm going to focus on finding what that root is. So what I need to do first, I've defined f of x as this function. When you're doing this with an equation, you have to make it equal to 0 before you can define that as your f of x. So for example, if this was a 2, you would have to move it over and make, and make it equal to zero, and then your function would be that minus two. So just be aware of that. In my formula, I need the derivative. So I find the derivative of this, which would be nine x squared minus eight x minus eight. My formula says that x2 will equal x1 minus f of x1 divided by f prime of x1. So in this example, I know I'm going to use 2 as my x1. So I'm going to do this calculation. So x2 will be equal to 2 minus, here's my function. So I put 2 in for my x. f of 2 is going to be that. divided by f prime of x1, so it means f prime of 2, so I put a 2 in for x. And I calculate this. Usually in these questions, you'll be told how accurate they expect your answer to be. So let's say we want it accurate to four decimal places. When I Calculate the numerator, I get negative 8. When I calculate the denominator, I get 12. So I will get 2 plus 2 thirds, which is 2.6666, and it keeps going. I'm going to write it down at, as 2.667, but when I use this value to do the calculations again, I'm not going to use the rounded off value that I wrote down. I'm going to use the value that's on my calculator. So you will need to know how to store numbers on your calculator so that you can use the exact value. If you don't want to be using rounded off or it defeats the purpose of this numerical method, you're introducing error. So that's x2. Once you've obtained a value for x2, we're now going to use the value, but the actual value on your calculator, to find x3. So x3 will be that new value of x in, your, um, in Newton's formula. So it'll be x2 minus f of x2 divided by f prime of x2. So I'm not gonna write the number because it's a lot of decimal places, so I'll just put x2 minus f of x2 will be three times x2 cubed minus four times that value squared minus eight times that value 
divided by 9 times that value squared minus 8 times that value minus 8. And my recommendation when you're punching this in on your calculator is every time you see these brackets, you're going to be doing a recall from your memory. And I would recommend that you put brackets around your numerator and brackets around your denominator so that you could actually punch it in as memory recall minus bracket, go through all of this, end of bracket, divide by bracket, and then write this expression or do this calculation, end of bracket, equals. And that should work, and you should get a value of 2.4615 if you've done it correctly. If not, try again, and uh, don't be afraid to put brackets every time you see these brackets as well as these outer brackets that I put in. Now that you have x3, x4 will be the same thing, but we put x3 in. When you repeat this formula now with this new x value that's actually going to be on your calculator, you should get 2.4311. Again, store that value and repeat the calculations, and you should get 2.4311 again. Because these are the same to four decimal places, we know then that our root accurate to four decimal places would be 2.4311. You will know if you're on the right track as you're doing these calculations because x1 was 2, x2 was 2.6667. So the difference there we can take a look at. And then x3 was 2.4615. So the difference between my x values is decreasing and it's decreasing again. And that should be happening. If you're going all over the place, then you're doing something wrong. So if, if you've chosen an x value that's close enough and if you've done everything correctly, you should notice that you're getting closer to a result because the difference is between your x values gets smaller and smaller. But it's not easy on your calculator. Get very familiar with how to use the memory function and your orders of operations. If you want to practice this again, you could use the same function and you could find this root. Let your first guess be negative one. And I'm not sure how many iterations it will take, but you should end up with negative 1.0972 as your, as your root accurate to four decimal places. I would highly recommend that you practice this and get good with your calculator. In the next video, I'm going to use Newton's method again on an example where we don't know what to use as our first guess, and I'm gonna show you how to determine that. So practice this and then take a look at the next video.